Welcome to the Proximal Humerus Interosseous Needle Insertion video. I will demonstrate how to insert an I.O. needle at the Proximal Humerus site in particular. This site is particularly useful in a hypotensive trauma patient whereby a peripheral IV access is difficult or impossible to obtain during emergency resuscitation. The advantages of using an I.O. needle is that it provides a very rapid and effective non-collectible access. This is because the I.O. space contains a matrix of blood vessels and nerve. This structure provides a rapid distribution of fluids and medication. And when utilizing I.O. access, infusion pass from the medullary space through the vascular system into the central circulation. And it takes about 3 seconds for the medications or fluids to reach the heart. The contraindication for this procedure is if there's a fracture or a previous attempt or access in the target bone within the previous 48 hours and also if there's a previous significant orthopedic procedure at the site, prosthetic limb or joint. Next, we will move to the equipment needed for this procedure. There is two types of needle set, a manual or a semi-automatic such as this drill-based system. For this demonstration, we will be using the drill-based system which have three different needle sizes. The needle size is determined by the weight and the need of the patient. The 15mm needle is for a patient weighing between 3 to 39kg, the 25mm needle is for more than 40kg, and the 45mm is used for the proximal humerus insertion or there is an excessive tissue overlying the target site. We also need a sharp safety tool to keep the stay light before disposing it, a 5mm syringe to aspirate and flush, a prime extension set, a stabilizer dressing, a minimum of an alcohol swab or any antiseptic solution, a pneumatic bag, a bottle of crystalloid, a prime giving set, and don't forget a drip stand. There are several ways to position the patient's arm and identify the landmark for insertion. The quickest way is to place your palm on the patient's shoulder anteriorly. Place the patient's hand over the abdomen by adducting the elbow and internally rotate the humerus. This will move the bicep brachii tendon away and expose the large area of cortex of the greater tuberosity. The alternate method is by placing the arm tight against the body and rotate the hand so that the palm is facing outwards and the thumb pointing downwards. And for specific area, the area that feels like a ball under your palm will, while moving the arm is the general target area. You should be able to feel this ball by pushing deeply even in obese patients. This will be the general target area. To identify the landmark of the insertion site, place the ulnar aspect of your hand vertically over the axilla and then place the ulnar aspect of your other hand along the midline of the upper arm laterally. Place your thumbs together over the arm and palpate deeply up the humerus to the surgical neck. This may feel like a golf ball on a tee. The spot where the ball meets the tee is the surgical neck. The insertion site is 1 to 2 cm above the surgical neck on the most prominent aspect of the greater tubicle. After you have identified the point of insertion, assemble the needle to the driver and then point the needle tip at the 45 degree angle anterior to the coronal plane and 45 degree cephalic to the sagittal plane, aiming towards the tip of scapula. Before inserting the needle, clean the insertion site per institutional protocol. Stabilize the extremity and gently press the needle through the skin until the tip touches the bone. Make sure there is at least one mark on the needle set is visible above the skin prior to insertion. This will indicate an adequate needle length was selected. Then, squeeze the trigger and apply gently steady pressure. Do not use excessive force during insertion. Let the easy I.O. power driver do the work. Drill gently into the humerus 2 cm or until the hub reaches the skin in an adult. The hub of the needle should be perpendicular to the skin. Stabilize the hub and remove the driver and stillet. Place the stillet in the sharp safety tool before disposing it in the sharp container. After that, Place the stabilizer dressing over the catheter hub. Remove the adhesion from the back of the dressing and apply the, the dressing to the skin. 
Confirm placement by aspirating marrow and it can be sent for appropriate blood testing or flush the catheter with a normal saline. Considering infusing 2% preservative free and epinephrine free lidocaine prior to flushing, attach a prime easy connect extension set to the hub, firmly securing it by twisting clockwise. We can then deliver medication and fluids as ordered. The medication can be administered in the same dose, rate and concentration as given via peripheral IV. IO excess flow rates will vary among patients and anatomical sites. Gravity alone will rarely generate adequate flow rates. An IV pressure bag capable of generating 300mm mercury pressure or standard IV infusion pump is usually required for optimal flow. The average fluid volume from the adult proximal humerus site is about 6.3 liters per hour under pressure. The catheter can be used within 24 to 48 hours from the time of insertion. To remove the catheter, remove any extension set and dressing and attach a lower lock syringe to the hub. Use the syringe as a handle and twist the catheter clockwise while maintaining alignment while pulling it straight up. Avoid rocking or bending during removal. This is to prevent needle breakage.